everyone. I'm Ghost Mule, and welcome to my channel, Everyday Backpacker. So I wanted to do something a little bit differently today. Recently, I was watching YouTube videos, as we are wanting to do, and um, one of my really good buddies and fellow channel creators, uh, Jay from Jay Wonders Out, put out a video where he talked about how he got into backpacking and how um, it's progressed through his life up until this point. And I thought it'd be a really fun thing for me to sit down and do the same, um, with his blessing, of course. And so I thought I would sit down and talk to you a little bit about how I got into backpacking and um, what it's meant to me in my life, why I continue to backpack, and even how it ended up becoming my profession. So my backpacking career started uh, way back in the 90s. Uh, in 1997, the year before I graduated high school, um, I had an opportunity to go on a trip to a place called Philmont Scout Ranch um, with the Boy Scouts. Uh, for those that don't know, Philmont is a former working ranch in New Mexico that is currently owned and operated by the Boy Scouts of America, although now they're called uh, BSA or Scouts America. And it's operated as one of their high adventure camps. In this case, it's a place uh, where you can go on up to 10 day backpacking trips in the Santa de Crista mountain range in New Mexico near the town of Cimarron. Prior to this, I had attempted backpacking once uh, with my dad. And this is one of my dad's favorite stories, so I'm sure you're gonna enjoy watching this dad. Um, but we, my dad had always kind of fostered an interest in my outdoor um, pursuits. You know, he showed me growing up uh, pictures of his trip to uh, Yosemite Valley with my uncle um, when they were younger, and it really piqued my interest and also introduced me to Ansel Adams photography. And so early on, we've always had a pretty um, big interest in the outdoors. Uh, my dad used to like to go camping, but mostly it was car camping. We would pack everything up, drive to the campsite, set up a tent, drive back in town, get dinner, go back, have a fire, go to bed. But he also had in our garage a um, blue uh, external frame backpack, which I always thought was very interesting. And so one day I asked him if we could go on a weekend backpacking trip. And so we did the best we could. Uh, packed things up. This was the early 90s and um, well before the internet, well before YouTube or anything like that and for better or for worse. And uh, long story short, we had absolutely no clue what we were doing. Uh, so we packed up these overloaded packs and we set off and it was miserable. We ran through a patch of stinging nettles. We got lost several times. We went up a relatively short hill and our viewpoints differ on this, but uh, my dad says I feigned an asthma attack at the top. And all in all, it was pretty miserable. We ended up kind of bailing out on it, and that was kind of the initial uh, attempt. Um, so for whatever reason, come 1997, um, my troop had an opportunity to go to this um, ranch, and it was kind of a big deal, and so... Either I was searching for some form of redemption or just uh, personal uh, torture, I decided I would go with uh, my friends on this trip, and my parents uh, agreed. Uh, little did they know what they were getting themselves into. Uh, so that year was spent uh, trips back and forth to Dayton and Columbus, Ohio, to buy gear. And again, this is at the infancy of the internet, so we didn't really have a lot of information to go off of. Um, we actually were taking trips to the library, uh, it was still a thing, and trying to find out the best information we could for gear. Uh, this is definitely the era of the big lunky boot and was just starting to come into the era of the internal frame backpack. Um, so in Columbus, I bought my first ever backpack, which was a North Face Badlands internal frame pack. It was this massive, uh, probably a 75 liter ballistic nylon 
almost canvas bag with padding about that thick. I think this pack weighed at least 12 pounds on its own. Um, and that was my first ever backpack. And we assembled all of our gear and we set off on this trip. Now we didn't go by ourselves. We actually went with two other groups as well, another Boy Scout troop and then a group of explorers, which at the time was the, the co-ed um, branch of the scouts. Um, so there were a few girls on the trip as well. Um, we loaded up into a bunch of 15 passenger vans and we headed out and we had decided we were going to take a few days to get there and stop to a few places to kind of acclimate because we were going from Ohio to New Mexico to hike in the mountains and um, that would be rough. Uh, prior to our going on the trip, uh, we did go on a couple other short backpacking trips and uh, to break our gear in and ourselves in and the very first trip, my boots... Uh, which I don't even remember what brand they were at this point, just destroyed my feet. And uh, I was assured by our leaders um, that they would eventually break in as long as I wa wore them for uh, Philmont and I wouldn't have any problems. Some really great foreshadowing there, right? Anyway, so Ben, we set off on this trip, and uh, I know we stopped at Pike's Peak, uh, I know we were at Pikes Peak. I have pictures of us up there. All I remember was getting altitude sickness because we took the cog train up. And I just kind of remember slumping on a bench the entire time, just miserable. Um, and uh, I went to a few other places, uh, Great Sand Dunes, where we uh, literally slid down the sand dunes on sleds. Um, and eventually we made it to New Mexico. Um, we set out on this 10 day trip, this journey, and physically for me, this trip was, was terrible. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was a very tough experience. My boots did not break in. I had blisters right off the first day and I ended up hiking the rest of Philmont in a pair of late nineties, um, basketball tennis shoes. I don't know. You know, and my feet were just destroyed. They were raw by the end of the trip and most likely overloaded, even though at the time our pack weight was pretty, pretty decent. Um, I think we were in the area of uh, 50 pounds or so pack weight. Um, and it was just a real struggle. And I definitely struggled. As far as the actual trip goes, it was really awesome. We um, actually had a, a couple days where we were um, using um, mules uh, to carry our gear, which is kind of ironic considering I would later see a ghost mule and that would become my trail name. Thanks, Jay. Um, but uh, the weather was phenomenal. The only time we had rain, we were actually inside a building loading shotgun shells because we had opportunity to do some fly, uh, skeet shooting while we were out there. Um, it was a great experience, uh, a lot of beautiful sights, great friends, um, and I was miserable the entire time um, because I just was in my head the entire time. And uh, about halfway through the trip, um, my mood was starting to affect other people, and one of the leaders in the group um, who had gone to Philmont previously uh, named Paul took me aside. Now I'm still friends with Paul and he doesn't remember this conversation, but for me it had a pretty profound effect. Um, and he basically talked about the first time he went to Philmont where it rained the entire time and more or less stated that um, backpacking is not easy. It's not um, something that is enjoyable all the time. It's more about how you approach those situations and how you allow yourself to react to them. And admittedly, I had been reacting terribly up until that point. Um, so yeah, it was really sound advice. The rest of the trip was pretty a lot more enjoyable. Um, I was definitely happy to be done. And um, you know, we got down to the base camp, and uh, this massive storm hit while we were there. I was actually almost I was knocked off my feet by lightning in the parking lot. Um, but it was a really um, amazing trip. Um, so we get done with that trip, and then the next year, uh, the year I graduated from high school, um, I had an opportunity to go to uh, visit Yellowstone or Yosemite uh, Valley again um, for the first time for me, but again with my father and uncle. Uh, my graduation gift was the three of us. We spent two weeks 
in Yosemite and that was some of the most amazing scenery I've ever seen and I think the combination of that and the trip to Philmont it really sparked something in me a, a small fire that was going to start growing over time um, and yeah just an amazing experience after high school I um, attempted college and did not do well um, I needed to grow up a little bit more and so I actually went in to become a firefighter I became a firefighter paramedic uh, for my um, local town I grew up in and I spent 10 years working that job and I had a lot of downtime and so I was able to go out on a few other trips and this would begin kind of my next build up in the process um, learning as much as I could um, to try to figure out what I did wrong at Philmont and eventually I discovered the book series The Complete Walker by Colin Fletcher. This is the first edition that I have. I've lost the one that I've actually bought back then in the early 2000s which was I think was the fourth or fifth edition. Um, and that book um, definitely um, showed a lot of things that I had not even considered that I was doing wrong and I actually was doing wrong. And this is the birth of the internet starting to grow. It's still pre-YouTube. And um, I was able to get a little bit more information from that. Um, and towards the end of my backpacking career, or my firefighting career, uh, I had an opportunity to um, do training with Five Rivers Metro Parks in Dayton uh, to possibly be a volunteer trip leader because I had some backpacking experience and I was a paramedic, so they were definitely interested in that. Um, and so we went on this trip and went to a trip in a, to a place called Dolly Sods, West Virginia. And this is another just amazing trip and probably the best large group trip I've ever been on. The people that were in that group were some of the most phenomenal people and outdoorsmen I've ever um, known. And unfortunately, I'm not in contact with any of them anymore. Um, but this group just came together and was rock solid and didn't have any storming everybody was supportive uh, the group dynamic was just epic even the leader said that they, they had to try to push us and we still wouldn't um, um, experience a you know outburst or whatever and on that trip i was talking to the leader and i found out about a school program at a school in ohio hawking college um, called Eco ecotourism and adventure travel and at this point in my life, I had been looking at the possibility of doing something other than being a firefighter because the stress and physicality of the job were starting to get to me. And so I decided, uh, yeah, I was going to go back to college. So I quit my career, packed up, went to southwestern Ohio, southeastern Ohio in the foothills of Appalachia and uh, started the program. The program no longer exists, but at the time it was uh, a really cool program we did a study abroad in the Bahamas where I learned scuba diving and windsurfing and sailing. Um, but the coolest part for me was the summer that I did my adventure leadership uh, program where we actually learned how to, you know, be more um, professional and leading groups in, in the outdoors. Um, and on that trip, we did a backpacking trip up to the um, Black Hills and canoeing trip in the Niobrara River in Nebraska. And definitely started to learn a lot of those skills that eventually would lead me to where I'm at now. Um, after I graduated, I was working for the state parks uh, of Ohio as a seasonal ranger, and I needed just something to do in the off season. So I had an opportunity to come out and do some environmental ed stuff in Montana, and that was in 2014, and I have not gone back since. I still live out here in Montana. Um, and I got a job working in the outdoor industry as a uh, outdoor retail um, person, sales person. I don't even know what. Sales associate. That's the, the title. Um, and I've been doing that ever since. Um, it does give me an opportunity to interact with people who are new backpackers and to um, you know, facilitate their needs in backpacking. Um, but it still kind of led a little bit of a, a void in me. I was still going out on backpacking trips. Um, but, um, I wanted to do something more and that's what led to the YouTube channel. Um, some of my friends, I had filmed some of my early trips and they were terrible. 
Um, but my friends were like, wow, we would really love to see more of this. And so I took the plunge and I made the channel. And ever since then, it has been a great creative outlet for me um, to be able to kind of share my experiences and share what I'm learned and I'm still learning um, as I go. And uh, the opportunity to share that with you guys has been phenomenally fun for me. Um, I'm certainly not trying to be YouTube famous, but I definitely have had a lot of fun doing this. And the other reason why I continue to do it is um, for me, um, dealing with some of the stuff that I experience as a firefighter and paramedic um, has led to some mental health challenges for me, to be perfectly honest, and I won't go into detail on those, um, but uh, it's been a great opportunity for me to um, kind of regrow and cope with some of those PTSD and other things that I have experienced um, at a light level. Um, and that is why I continue to do it. Um, not every trip is type one fun. Some, a lot of them are type two, just like the trip I had on Philmont. But the difference between now and then is I have the opportunity to use those experiences to grow. And even on the worst days on the trail, I still look back and with fondness um, for those experiences um, and what they have taught me. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to keep doing it because it's a lot of fun. Um, and um, I have seen and gotten to experience some absolutely amazing things. And I am so thankful for all of you who uh, have sat through this long video, but also um, supported me throughout this. Um, it's been amazing. The community that I have developed through it has been just inspiring and um, so uh, happy. Um, to be a part of it and to meet these people and, ex and to interact. Um, your guys' comments and stuff really mean the world to me, and I thank you greatly. Um, what's some great experience that you've had that have led you to uh, go down into this hobby? I'd love to hear your stories. Please comment those below. Um, or if you feel more, um, s more secure in emailing me something that's more private, um, you can email me at everydaybackpacker at gmail.com. Uh, if you'd like some stickers, I have stickers. Um, please uh, send me a message again. Either email me or send me a message through the Instagram account, which is everyday underscore backpacker. Um, and I would love to send some of those stickers out to you guys. Uh, thank you again. I really appreciate it. Um, this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And now, as always, keep hiking on.